All right, Coach, whenever you're ready, you want to start with an opening statement and open for questions. Uh, well, you know, first of all, great challenge um, uh, and game by Colorado. Uh, two of the top net teams in the tournament, battling it out. We knew um, even if we did, you know, get a lead, they were going to come back swinging, getting that buzz and, you know, try and get us uncomfortable. But, you know, I'm so proud of this team. I'm so proud of the staff coming together. You know, Coach Joe uh, being a part. You know, um, and just us upholding the standard, you know, and representing her and Ole Miss the way we've been doing all year. And I will say, uh, you know, pain of success, man. I mean, you know, early in the year, those losses at LSU that were close, you know, the Tennessee loss that was close, we were, we were learning. We were growing and grinding through that to understand and learn how to pull these moments out. So definitely proud of the team. Uh, and we still got work to do. David? Hey, Shay, I want to take you back to a sequence late in the game. Um, Mimi had just been called for traveling right after the inbound pass, and Colorado got the basketball back down only by three. Mm -hmm. And Madison Scott and Donetta Johnson each had blocks on that possession. And from that point forward, you guys were able to kind of stretch that lead back out and take back control of the game. How big was that sequence there? on the defensive end? Well, that sequence was huge. And I think, you know, the girls, like I said, like the team being in those positions before, the communication between the team was, hey, we've been here before. I mean, coaches and players, we were all saying it. We've been here before. We know what this feels like. We understand this moment and we know what to do. We win games by getting stops. We defend, we rebound, and then we run and we share the ball. So we just got back to our principles on that play and locked in to get it done. Nick? Kind of going off that, just these last three games that you guys played, how indicative of it, of the team performance was it that you guys were able to do this without Coach Yo, without the fans, just kind of play your style of basketball, play defensive the way you did for three games? I mean, you know, I, you know, not to kind of counter the without, but, uh, you know, it's not really without Coach Yo. You know, Coach Joe has, has poured into this program and every individual in here, and we follow her leadership and her guide. She sets the standard, and we uphold the standard. Um, so she's here with us. You know, um, she's still the leader. You know, the general just wasn't in the field with us. You know, but the general still sets the tone. She sets the standard, and we follow the standard. Um, and fans showed up. I mean, the gym was rocking every three, you know, all three games. And it was cool because it was the first time that, uh, you know, we've had some fans, but it was cool because here the fans are closer to the court. You know, it's a high school gym. So it actually felt like it was probably three, 500 people in here, 1,000 people in here. So we appreciate the fans and the support. You know, the chancellor and the AD were here, you know, and the love that was shown over the last three games is absolutely appreciated. And we needed the next couple of games as well. Adam? Coach, kind of going off of that, just talk about uh, Mimi's performance down the stretch at the free throw line. Okay. Oh, Mimi, listen, we were just in the locker room. I think Mimi, especially, she stepped, Mimi stepped up in the absence of Coach O, you know, and we are so <laughs> proud of Mimi. Her leadership and her guidance on the floor has been top notch. <laughs> Um, um, there's no way we're sitting here right now with these three wins without Mimi Reed. Um, I gave her a shout out the last game and I'm gonna give her another one uh, because Mimi has been absolutely outstanding with her leadership and her discipline and her energy and her communication. You know, um, even pregame, like when we're going through the scouts, you know, she's talking and getting us huddled up and making sure we understand what's going on. So, I mean, salute, I'm a military guy. so. I have a serious salute to Mimi Reed helping us get to this point. John? What kind of impact has Yo not being there kind of had on you and your team? I know you mentioned that she's there, but her not literally physically being there, what type of impact has that kind of had on you and, and what kind of effect has that Kind of, would you say your guys are playing even harder because she's not there or what type of impact has it had? Well, I mean, you know, I think this team always wants to win. 
Um, but sometimes when adversity hits or circumstances hit, you know, uh, you find a deeper level of why, you know, and everyone that was here was within the team and the staff, our why was to uphold Ole Miss, to uphold Coach Yo. We did not want to let her down. We refused to not get through these three games so she can get back with us and we can finish the mission. So that was that's what it was, and that was, that was everybody's mentality. And what about you from your perspective? I mean, you're, you're thrown into this tournament. You're thrown into postseason play, taking on this role. I, I mean, what has this just experience kind of been like for you? I mean, I think for me, it's been, uh, you know, all about, you know, understanding growth. You know, um, I think like come, when I first got here, you know, it was all about, you know, coach entrusting me to help her move the program forward. You know, and then when we as we build, you know, and kept going and kept growing uh, and got to this point, you know, it came for me. It was OK. I can't let the general down. Uh, and for me personally, I think it's just me filling my role, me doing my job and me making sure we we get to the point where we can complete the mission. Um, I'm not taking it personal at all, um, other than just being happy for the whole group and understand that we're still, we're still fighting and we're still playing basketball. The season's still moving. And the last one from me, when, again, how much easier does it make your job knowing that you have a player like Shakira Austin to kind of be like an anchor of this team, if you will? I know she didn't lead the team in scoring today. It was a balanced scoring affair. But like, how much easier does a player like Shakira Austin make your job? I mean, you know, everybody focuses on Shakira. You know, um, and her being as dynamic as she is, you know, um, other people, it gets other people open, you know, and, uh, but they have to worry about other players as well. So if they can take her to take two defenders, triple team, it's going to make everybody else get off, you know. Um, and I think, too, like uh, Shakira has done a lot of great things for us this year. And I think the special thing, too, with this program is we've had players step up, you know, um, all the way down the line. You know, and it's been a beautiful thing to see them grow together and learn each other together and learn everybody's strengths, you know what I mean, and what they provide and start respecting that. And once they started respecting and learning each other's identity, they started holding each other accountable, which boosted not just Shakira, but everybody elevated to another level. So as special as Shakira is, I mean, the growth that we've seen in this team throughout this season has been special. So we're just, you know, lifting the program and just setting the tone for the future. Uh, are you guys staying? Are you guys? I'm sorry. Are you guys staying in Memphis uh, for for the week? No, no, we're coming okay. back. We're coming back. Okay. Tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, sir. Time for one more for Shay from Parish, and then we'll move on to the student athletes. Hey, Shay, you touched on this, I think, when you talked about uh, the close losses to LSU and Tennessee, kind of preparing you guys. Mm -hmm. But how difficult was it to take that momentum that Colorado had and, and really just stop it and and turn it around? I mean. Y'all had lost like 12 points off a 15-point lead. How difficult was it to just turn that momentum around? I mean, I think it was just getting back to defense. I mean, we were not, you know, up passing lanes. We were not dictating and disrupting on a defensive end. We weren't winning uh, loose balls, which we call, we call our balls. Um, and we weren't really on the glass. So we just had to get back to our defense. And we were being a little slack um, in that. Um, and letting them get too comfortable. And then offensively, it was really about composure. Get the ball to the high post, get the ball to the short corner. Um, if the shot goes up, we want our shot. And we wanted to, we wanted to uh, expose them on second chance. We really weren't getting offensive rebounds like we wanted to. So we had to get second chance opportunities. And we started picking that back up, which got us some buckets, got us to the free throw line. Caitlin McGee's offensive rebound put back on the free throw line was huge um, in, the, in that stretch to help us uh, seal the game. Thank you. Sorry, we still have one more, actually. Uh, David? Hey, Coach, can't let this thing in without anybody asking you about Donetta Johnson tonight. Uh, leading scorer, I know it was a balanced effort, but she stepped up big time, it appears. Listen, Netta was huge. She's had a great tournament. Um, Netta has had a controlled and poised tournament, and I'm proud of her leadership as well. I mean, she's been really vocal on the floor. I mean, she was the one – it actually brought the group together and said, uh, and said, uh, hey, y'all, we've been here before. Let's get a stop. 
you know, so the netter has been absolutely phenomenal, just like with Mimi and the rest of the game, you know, so I'm absolutely proud of her. And her future is ridiculous. It's sky high, you know, so if she continues to grow and mature and understand who she can be and her leadership potential, I mean, and then add that with her skill set, I mean, the kid is going to be, I mean, the kid is ridiculous. She's going to be even more special. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. Up next, we have Mimi Reed. Questions for Mimi Reed? Mimi, you've been phenomenal all 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 tournament. Uh, just so stinking proud of you. Uh, <laughs> tell me what was going on in your mind at the end when it looked like you guys started to unravel. Um, what went through my mind was stay composed, bring the team together. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought, what would Coach Joe do? What would Coach Joe say? So I said those things. I told him that we got it, stay connected calm down and just take your time and notice that we're still in control. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I did get to a point where you get those flashbacks, like we was in this position before, but now you have to grow. It was a moment for us to grow and I think we did. And as a team, we just all came together and said, that's not happening again. David. Hey Mimi, <clears throat> what is the difference in y'all's confidence level now versus say uh, January? What, what's the difference? What has happened? Um, experience. Uh, we played games. We went through the highs and the lows. We've seen times where we, did, we fell short. We've seen times where we grew. And I think we just really took advantage of those moments and in practice, just really pushing. And Coach Joe and her staff did a great job of putting us in positions during practice. And it's like, why not have confidence if you prepare? When you prepared, you're confident. So you have to lean back on your training. Can you go back and put your finger on a time or a roundabout time where that maybe uh, inexperience started turning into confidence a little bit? Um, I'll probably go back to the second time that we played LSU at LSU. And we lost that game. And once again, we was up and we, d we couldn't finish. And from then on, we said, no, we have to find a way and we have to push ourselves. And now we have to realize that we can't fold in those moments. We have to just grasp them and keep going and don't look back. And I think that's what we started to do as the season went on. And that's why we're playing at our best right now. How excited are, are you guys as a team to have this opportunity to, uh, to win a championship and finish off your season like that? We're very excited. Um, we understand that we came to this tournament to win it. Um, there was no other way around it. And I mean, you put yourself in a position and you say, okay, well, this is the goal. Now we do everything in our power to go get it. And we prepare and we just stay connected all the time. And I think we feel really great. And we understand that this is not the final, like we still got two more games. We still have the end goal. This is just a pit stop right now. Thanks, Mimi. Thank you. Nick? Mimi, obviously you guys have been through some really low lows the last two years. Just to be able to be a team that's now in the final four, did you think this sort of a turnaround would be achievable so quick? And kind of what gave you the confidence to be able to do this? Um, I mean, I was definitely there for those low lows. So I must say, you got to trust the process and you got to stick with it. And I happen to be one who stuck with Coach O and the staff and just believed in the program and believed that she was going to turn this program around as long as you stick with it. And the culture that we have been building as a team and Coach O has put set forth, I think pretty much just tells us like, I mean, we didn't think it happened this quick, but hey, we're going to ride with it and we're going to keep doing what we got to do every single day. Any further questions for Mimi? All right, thank you. Up next, we have Madison Scott. Hey, 
Hi, Madison. This is your lab McEwen from 524 Villa. <laughs> listen, listen uh, I wanted to know, I want to know, you were a different player from the start of the game. And I want to know what happened. Did you eat something good for pregame? What was it? No, um, just, just I want to do well for my teammates and my coaches. You know, my coaches challenged me to do well from the beginning. And stop. I have a tendency to ease into things and take the slow sometimes. It takes me to the fourth quarter, to the second half to get going. So I just wanted to start early, help my team early, and just, you know, make a difference. I wanted to help us win. David. Hey, Madison. Um, some might say you took a chance uh, when you decided you wanted to come to Ole Miss. You had many other places that you could have gone. Uh, how do you feel about that right now? And uh, what do you think the future is like for this program? Um, I love being here. <laughs> I love I love this program. I love Coach Yo. I love the staff. I love my teammates so much. This is my second family. Um, the future is very bright. Um, I think we, I, you know, we want to keep making history. We want to be. We want to keep doing the unthinkable. You know, we want to keep proving people wrong. So we, we're ready. We're fired up. You know, right now our body's a little aching. You know, we're gonna take the, the days off these next couple of days and you know get ready. But we're ready to keep going, keep making history, and just setting setting the bar high for next season. Were people around you surprised at your decision to go and to a place where you were going to have to build something as opposed to a place where you were going to go be a part of maybe something that was already great? Oh, yes. People were very surprised. But, you know, my family and God, they had me, you know, they, they you know, I, I looked at my family. I looked at my inner circle. You know, I trust the coach on her vision and I trust the God and, and, and his vision for me. So I, I know I made the right decision and I, I feel really good about my decision right now. And you trusted Coach Yo, and I know she's listening. Uh, what was it about her recruitment of you that made you positive that you wanted to come to Ole Miss? Our relationship. Um, I talked to Coach Yo every other day. <laughs> that was that was like my best friend. I, I talked to Coach Yo, and every time I got on the phone with her, it was bigger than basketball. Yes, we discussed basketball and her visions for the program, and you know where I saw things, what I wanted to do. But I don't care if it was anything wrong with me or anything going on. Coach Yo always knew. She was always able to figure it out. I don't know how but she was always able to pinpoint exactly what was going on with me. So it just showed it was bigger than basketball. You know, she, she's, she's a great coach, you know, and I, I look up to her, I admire her. And again, I'm ready to keep doing big things. Thanks, Madison. Thank you. Nick? Madison, what was going through your head after you got that block and then Donetta got the block right after that in the last few minutes? Let's go. <laughs> that was going through my head. I, I was fired up. Uh, my team was fired up. I was just ready to go, ready to get the dub. <laughs> Shay was telling us a little bit about how Mimi and Netta and a few of the older players on the team really stepped up as kind of coaches on the court for this term. And what's that been like from your perspective, having those older players this week? It's been really good um, because at certain moments in the game, you know, I get flustered. You know, some of the other freshmen get flustered. We're in our head a little bit. But, you know, Coach O hasn't been here. Usually Coach, Coach O will snap it out of us, you know, right away. So um, having, having Mimi on the floor, which is like, which, again, since Coach O has been gone, Mimi stepped up big time. She's been our coach on the floor, literally. So having Mimi, hey, Madison, come, hey, 2-4, get out of that. Snap out of that. You know, having Donetta, every play, they were right there. 2-4, you good? You know, they were very comforting. They were the voices I needed to hear. They calmed me down. They calmed our team down. They were the heartbeat of this team. They kept us going. Any further questions for Madison? Thank you, guys. Right. Have a good night. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thank you. you. What are we talking about, guys? What are we talking about tonight? <laughs> the revolution has begun. <laughs> hey, since I'm building a sidebar on this, talk real quick about Madison Scott and what she's meant to you this year. Listen, when Maddie committed to us, uh, we ran around the the we we ran around the office building for like 10 minutes just celebrating just so excited so pumped up we worked really hard to get Maddie um and the reason why we went after her hard is it's crazy because I didn't think we could get her so I didn't even let my coaches recruit her so like I was the only one that recruited Maddie because I was like if she's gonna say no she could say no to me my other coaches will work on, they'll work on the B list. 
But when she said that she was all in, um, I knew it would be the beginning of uh, something special and our whole freshman recruiting class. So she's been incredible. And uh, if, if Maddie's ceiling is a 10, then Maddie's I got a two. Uh, but tonight you saw flashes of what we want her to be able to do, hitting the jumper, you know. Then she was just incredible. That block she got at the end twice. I mean, huge stops, you know. I could go on and on about Maddie. You know, we put in a lot of work and we really believe in, in, in a kid like that. Like I told y'all, she's a franchise player for us. Looking at this bracket, I think you play Northern Iowa. Is that mm -hmm. is that who you uh, Have you had a chance to look at tape on them? And what do you think? I don't know anything about them. Um, I just I know just that they're in the OVC. So starting start tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll start looking and uh, seeing uh, what they're about. If I remember correctly, they shoot a lot of threes. So I'm hoping our experience with, say, Arkansas – uh, will help us with a team like this. Thanks, Joe. What Thank time you. are you going to the gym tomorrow morning? 5 a.m., um, 4 a.m., finally home? Uh, midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in there. I'll be in there at midnight if you're looking for me. <laughs> what you watching on Netflix? Uh, I didn't watch anything. Because of technology, I was still involved. So I was at every practice, every film. <laughs> Every free game, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I I fuss them out. Uh, I tell them come come close to the to the screen so I can see, and then I just let them have it. <laughs> All right. Good luck. All right. Thanks, guys. Congrats. All right. See you guys. Thanks, coach. See you. All right, Nick.